an idea, it's nice and even beneficial for us to say that it's my idea, isn't it? But what if the success of our business depends on shifting from our, sorry, from my to our? Snohetta, one of the world's most successful architecture and design companies, which you might know, for example, designing the Oslo Opera House, has created a business culture which denies individuals saying, it was my idea. They don't believe that an individual can own up to an idea. They believe that all ideas are born from a multitude of ideas made before and of different signals around us. And this shift, this change in their focus from individual competence to collective competence for people who are working there is actually the cornerstone of their success globally in their own branch. Intelligent work community, we believe that in order for organizations and individuals to succeed in the age of new work, three elements, three key elements are required. Here we have the first element, which we believe is one of them, meta skills. Then we have human-centric design. Then collaborative and continuous learning. So we believe that these are the key elements that will help us individuals and organizations move to and towards the change which is ongoing as we speak. If we look at the big picture and what explains why we believe that these three elements are the key elements when building an uh, intel intelligent community, there's a shift from hierarchy to self-directed systems, and, in thin, and within these systems, the value will be created differently. Complex problems are solved with a diverse group of people, and the work itself is changing. It's becoming more creative, where cause and effects are not that clear, and at the beginning of the process, you don't know what the outcome will be. So all this requires new skills, mindset, and learning abilities. Due to these aforementioned and also di digitalization and artificial intelligence, we believe that human and humanity will come to the center of attention. I love the paradox. So the more we have technology, the more human and humanity are needed and the more they are shifting towards the focus of attention. But can you perhaps share an example of how you've seen this happen in real life? When I started my career 20 years ago in process re-engineering, at that time the value were created through standardized processes and systems like IRP systems, and the people needed to adapt to those processes and systems. Today, it's vice versa. Human beings are at the heart of the work and its development. I think that's a concrete example of a, quite a profound change that has already happened um, from human, human adaption to technology and systems and processes to technology's adaption to humans. But let's see what else is ahead of us and happening. I think we all recognize that the work is changing, and we're trying to fulfill these new requirements and expectations. However, often the working environment, procedures, tools, and our skills are still following the logic of the old work. I see this happen in many of my clients. They struggle with these contradictions and its consequences. And the employees are feeling stressed 
and overwhelmed. The setup you just described, uh, this actually, I think it acquires new kind of learning abilities and new kind of learning strategies, both from organizations and individuals. So we are moving from learning to work to learning is work. This shows, for example, in expectations that organizations have towards individuals and vice versa. Well, we individuals, for example, we are expected to show learnability. In other words, we are expected to have an open and flexible mind that is positively tuned to quickly modify to constantly changing challenges. Um, but in order to learn more, it's not just what we need to do, not just to learn more, but what we also need to do is to let go of something that has already been learned before. For example, as a recruiter, I have observed that job profiles are becoming more amoeba-like. They are constantly reforming, they are changing, they are blending, and they are fading. I only just now had a conversation with someone who told me that the work, the job she does, doesn't seem to exist anymore as the content of the work or as a title of the work. The job itself, it is still there, but it has been blending with other similar work contents close by, and thus it has created a whole new job profile. As the lifespan of already learned things and competencies is becoming shorter, the continuous learning and collaborative learning is becoming more and more important. And I think one of the major questions for organization is that how to build a system or platform which enables collective learning, learning together. In our world, I think we should pay more attention to the fact that people together are creating new knowledge and value. So it is critical how different people and ideas meet and what comes out of these encounters. One of the three elements that will help us towards the intelligent work community are meta skills. They are sort of a complex thing, but the great thing about meta skills are that they can be learned. And the other great thing about meta skills is that they actually do not depend on the contents of the work itself. But the tricky side is, is that us individuals, we need to be willing and able to turn our sights inside of us into our own mind and into our own way of thinking. That is the key to developing meta skills. And so we believe that actually work life skills is becoming synonymous with life skills when the professional competence that we have fails to shelter us during these changes that we are going through in, in work life and in society, meta skills are the ones that can help you adapt, accept, and get along with the change. As needed change in our... Oh. <laughs> Well, she's <laughs> hurrying a bit, <laughs> wanting to tell her side of the things. <laughs> but so here we have five skills. Some of them are actually meta skills, but some of them are just skills which acquire meta skills so that you can show up these skills. They are examples of skills that can be of demand pretty much any time, any place any circumstances, but actually they are skills 
that according to LinkedIn's research made just recently, are the most wanted skills companies need from their employees in 2020. If we look at the list, we see that emotional intelligence is the fifth one. Last year, it was time management skills. Well, that's a timeless skill that we will be needing in the future also. But where do we need emotional intelligence? Well, for example, we have been talking about collaborative learning and emotional intelligence is the key to collaborative learning. Since what it acquires is continuous dialogue, interaction and mutual support towards each other. The needed change in our skills could also be described through the metaphor water in a glass. So while developing competencies, it is like adding water to a glass. But in order to develop meta skills, it's more like expanding the glass itself. Okay, uh, what does it mean for us all? <laughs> Basically for individuals, this means that the tool we have to succeed are mainly inside of us, in our mind. Somehow I find that comforting and at the same time challenging. But let's move on to one more skill of the future. A unicorn. Well, they are usually seen as a metaphor for dreaming big or being unique. In the world of recruitment, a pink unicorn is quite widely known as an embodiment of the most wanted skills an expert can have all in one package. They are quite rarely seen and some say that they don't actually even exist. But when heading towards the intelligent work community of the future, uh, income acquirement skills, I think, and we believe, are also the one that will be in the center of attention. I read about this first time uh, from a research paper, Work uh, 2040, by Demos Helsinki. And to put it shortly, it means that we need to develop ourselves in, in order to have several optional means of supporting ourselves instead of just one. For example, in Stanford University, the students have an option to participate uh, to a life design lab, and as an outcome, they need to, need to design three alternative ways of supporting themselves and their families to acquire income when they graduate. And we think that this actually applies to a modern organization as well. Because there will be no longer be somebody at the top of the organization or your supervisor to just delivering us work and arranging work for us. We will be responsible for employing ourselves, even as employees. So the message is that I'm all for dreaming and I'm all for acknowledging uniqueness, the pink unicorn in all of us. But at the same time, I think we need to dream and move on to directions, not just one, but multiple of directions where we see that income for us can be acquired in the future. Sorry. I meant to give you only the three headlines on the top at first, but now you've got it all at the same time. But when we think about this uh, from the organization's perspective, what is the responsibility for organizations when we think about developing meta skills and skills for employees to succeed and compete in the future. When you look at the first question, I believe each and every one of us 
would say that yes, our organization is willing to do that. Of course we are, because it benefits us. Mm. But when you look at the second question, would you be willing to support an individual's capability to compete and succeed in the future beyond working in your organization? Perhaps some of us would say yes, and some of us would hesitate and wonder what it actually means. Perhaps some of us would just say no. But we think that in the future market of talents, an organization that shows focus in devel developing the individual skill set in surviving the new work will be become the winners of the talent competition. The ones that are willing to show effort in developing the individuals when they are also leaving the organization. So beyond working in just that one organization. We have talked about these three elements we believe are key elements when building future intelligence work communities. We hope that we've been able to give you some insight for you to think and discuss further. So this is, this is for us and we thank you and welcome you to our lounge to discuss more and perhaps ponder over the issues we have been talking about, disagreeing, agreeing, or anything in between. Thank you. Thank you.